here with Adam Black. Thank you for joining us on the Rural Opportunities Podcast. Adam is an old buddy of mine from old college, and you took agriculture management there, correct? That's correct, yep. And you were always a cattle guy, as much as I had known you. So (laughs) um, you're going to talk to us about cattle shows and what all goes on there. Um, Right now at the CRE, we have... Canadian Bull Congress going on. It's the 37th annual Canadian Bull Congress. It's very exciting. Um, So for those of you who don't know much about cattle shows or are not really sure what it's about, this is going to give some insight into what goes on and why cattle shows are important and that kind of thing. So Adam, I'll let you introduce yourself, why um, you have been in cattle shows before. So what got you into that? Uh, yeah. So first off, thanks for having me on the, the podcast here. It's uh, it's always fun to catch up, uh, like you said, with an old friend. Mm-hmm. Um, so I got into cattle showing. So I didn't grow up on a farm. Uh, so it kind of, I have a different experience about it. Um, both parents uh, lived and grew up on a farm, mm-hmm. uh, but through different opportunities um, or family members uh, taking over, um, we were it, we didn't grow up on the farm. Uh, however, we were very involved in agriculture um, through 4-H. Um, and then we had some neighbors come in um, and they brought some cows to when they came, when they bought a farm next door. Um, and they were about our age and they asked us if we wanted to get involved in showing cows. Mm. And uh, we took that opportunity and uh, I, I never looked back. So I was I was nine years old when they moved in. Um, uh, so born and raised in Ontario, uh, fell in love with showing cows. Uh, and ultimately that's what got me, uh, that's what ultimately made my mind up to head West after, mm. uh, high school to pursue, um, beef cattle and, and the beef industry. Mm. That's really yeah. cool. I, yeah. uh, I didn't grow up on a farm either, but everybody around me, um, was farming and I like my second home growing up was a farm and so I've always mm-hmm. grown up with agriculture and I've always worked in agriculture so it's it's cool to have other people who are passionate about agriculture and you still work in agriculture who didn't grow up on a farm like there's opportunity for everyone to get into ag- oh there's so much opportunity with the within the ag industry yeah mm-hmm. it's incredible yeah. yeah that's really cool yeah so first, I want to ask you about terminology, because sure. a lot of people don't know the difference between a heifer and a cow, a steer and a bull. Most people think cows are just cows. So can you go through those terms with us? Uh, definitely, definitely. So uh, a heifer is a uh, female animal uh, that has not yet had a calf. Um, uh, she's typically one to two years old. Uh, but but um, can be older if she hasn't had a calf. Yeah. Um, a steer is a castrated male. Um, so typically these animals are raised uh, for meat consumption. Uh, a bull is uh, not a castrated male, an intact male, uh, and is typically used for, for breeding cows. Uh-huh. Uh, and then finally, cows. Um, they have had a they have had a calf, um, and they're typically a little older. Yeah, cows are the mamas. Cows are the mamas. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Um, and different cattle shows will be for. There's usually classes at the cattle show. For example, Bull Congress. They're showing a lot of bulls. There is mm-hmm. a heifer show there, and there is. Um, I believe one steer show as well. And so different cattle shows will be asking you to show each one of those, depending on what you're going to. That's correct. Yeah. And what is the purpose of cattle shows? Uh, That's a great, great question. Uh, So the main purpose uh, of a cow show is to evaluate and compare the characteristics of a, of a, a group of animals. So like you said, there's different classes. So uh, you get either a group of cows together and you can judge them, a group of bulls, steers, heifers. Um, and it's it's um, 
you know, you're you're comparing the quality and characteristics of that group of animals and then ranking them. Uh, producers, uh, another reason, uh, like, why is the purpose of cattle shows is um, for producers to gain recognition mm -hmm. uh, within their breed and use it to promote their and market their animals uh, and farming operation. Yeah, there's some distinction when you win awards at the shows. Um, mm -hmm. That's great for marketing your animals. Yeah, so like you said, like 37 years, uh, people have been using this uh Bull Congress to to mm -hmm. market and sell their animals. So a very, very cool testament to the Bull Congress. Yeah, absolutely. So the exhibitors are there to market their animals, to show off the best of their herd. Um, why is it important for purchasers to attend these events? Uh, so purchasers uh, usually are also farmers and breeders. Um, producers within the industry and they're they're looking to improve their own operation back at home so they're looking for the quality high quality animals uh, that also match within their breeding programs mm -hmm. uh, and then they want to they want to purchase those genetics and then also and then use them back on their own operation mm -hmm. absolutely so you it's not you're not just going to find out about a cattle show and then go a week later if you're not prepared. There's a lot of preparation that goes into it. Um, and as you're talking about the breeding, like people have been going to these shows for years. Um, there's a lot of genetics involved. So what are the preparations before you go into a cattle show? Um, for example, cattle are halter broke at the shows people will be leading them around so from the very beginning what is the preparations of a cattle show uh yeah so preparations uh can start very very uh, far in advance i guess uh, so when picking an animal um producers will look at their own herd um and often and evaluate their own cattle to then choose a bull that they think will complement that animal the best. Mm -hmm. So this is a lot of the times you're picking these animal, uh, picking these combinations for these animals uh, a year in advance, and then seeing what um, the calf is, and then you get into uh, you get into the work and preparation for the show. And so, like you mentioned, it starts months in advance. Um, so some things behind the scenes that you have to do, um, you know, there's paperwork registering the cattle. Um, making sure they're fit to go to these shows. Uh, like you mentioned, again, training, uh, leading, uh, but not also leading, but making sure the animal will stop when you want it to stop. Mm. These these shows, there's a lot going on. There's a, a big crowds, a lot of noises. So these animals need to be aware of that and know that they can trust the person on the halter um, to make sure that they are in good hands. So mm. Uh, that takes a lot of time to to gain that trust and bond. So um, there's also a lot of daily grooming um, just to make sure the animal is looking their best. And then um, the most important is just feeding, uh, taking care of that animal, making sure it's healthy uh, and in good condition throughout the whole show season. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, these, cow mm -hmm. these cow cows, heifer steers, they are quite tame because they're used to um, that training that you're talking about. And they're not the only ones in the show ring. You're usually showing with um, a bunch of other people. And so the cows have to be used to that and yeah, stopping. So they're not hitting the next animal in front of them. That's right. Absolutely. Yeah. And there's, usually a specific way that they stand in the ring so do you train how their stance yes yeah so um when when they're head to tail uh or on the perimeter of the ring their back legs will be offset and um what's that what that's doing is allowing the judge to see um the udder if it's a if it's a female and if it's a bull looking at the testicular development, and that is a big indication of uh, the genetics of that animal mm. uh, and is very important. So if you see their, the animal's legs offset, that's what uh, the judge 
um, that's an aspect that the judge will look at uh, along with the whole animal, but they're, they want to show that part off. Mm. So that's why you see the, the staggered legs. If they're side by side, they're typically will, will stand square. Um, and that's just to, um, because there's no way a judge can look from the side when they're standing side by side, uh, mm. when they're square, they just look, um, it really emphasizes some of the muscle development mm. um, and just keeps them, uh, makes everything look square and uh, desirable. Mm. Interesting. So yeah. what else are the judges looking for? So kind of going back to um, uh, what we talked about, you know, they're, they're looking at the specific characteristics and traits of the animals. Um, each breed is slightly different. Um, whether that's an Angus, uh, Charlet, uh, but not only are we talking beef breeds, we're talking dairy. Uh, so you don't, won't judge a dairy, same as you a dairy animal, the same as you would judge a beef animal. So each of these animals has certain characteristics that the judge will know about, mm. um, and, and understands. And so then they are picking, um, you know, they're looking at the size the overall appearance, uh, the body condition, um, to uh, how the animal moves is another big one. Mm. Uh, they want to make sure the animal moves freely, uh, is balanced uh, in its movements, just because if an animal can't walk or has trouble walking, they mm. they typically won't, they, they won't last as long as um, a better animal. Right. Yeah. A lot of these animals are... Uh, showing is a very small part of the industry, um, mm -hmm. but these animals have to walk sometimes miles to get to water uh, out on pastures or ranges. So um, making sure that their structure is correct is mm -hmm. is a very big aspect mm -hmm. to, to all of this. Yeah, that reminds me. I was talking to someone who came to one of our cattle sales that we had at the CRE, and he was talking about when he is looking for cattle to buy he really pays attention to their feet mm -hmm. um, their feet, feet and are very, legs yeah feet and legs yeah. are very important yeah yeah absolutely if they can't walk then they can't get to water they can't eat and it just breaks down pretty quickly from there so yeah feet and legs are very very important mm -hmm. that's interesting yeah. Um, so you've talked a little bit about genetics and mm -hmm. there is a lot of genetics involved in cattle showing and that's part of what they're showing off. Mm -hmm. um, so, so why is it important in the show world? Um, there's a trickle down effect. I'd say like um, they might producers that are selling beef to market um, they might not be looking at all these different traits, but uh, the best bulls will come from the best families uh, and they'll want those genetics. Um, they'll usually gain the best, uh, like they'll, the, the calves will be generally smaller, unassisted uh, mm -hmm. when calving, and then um, they'll grow fast and make sure they, they can hit their market weight and be mm -hmm. the most efficient animal. Uh, so, they might not look at some of the other traits. They mm -hmm. they might rely on the uh, breeders uh, of cow calf cow calf breeders who are are selling bulls um, that hold annual bull sales or whatever to to make those decisions, and then they can trust that they've they're picking from families that are uh, that will you know give calves that are are easy calving, but also grow up to be the biggest potential. So um, no, it doesn't why is it important to have those in shows um just because even though producers that are selling beef to market they are they're still involved in the in the process mm -hmm. uh just just later down the line i'd say mm -hmm. does that give a does that make sense yeah so the cattle show like people at the cattle shows they are breeding the cream of the crop and like you say that trickles down to um those um, who are marketing their beef for cat for for beef, for beef um, yep. or if they are selling cow calf pears or whatever they're doing it trickles yeah. down from there yeah 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 so. so not all producers 
are involved in cattle shows, but it still is still helpful. relevant. Yeah. 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 Okay. And it's, a, and it's a fun way to get out and uh, be with people that sh- are like-minded and share the same values. So yeah, it's a lot of fun too. Yeah. Yeah. There is that community at the cattle shows. We definitely see that at Canadian Bull Congress. It's really cool just to see people come out and talking to each other and um, their kids are helping them in the stalls. And it's just a really cool way to see the community. So can you talk about that community a little bit? Totally. Yeah. It's a very, very family oriented, like you said, mm-hmm. uh, right from grandma and grandpa down to grandchildren, mm-hmm. everyone's kind of coming together, working together, whether it's the newest generation taking over um, or whatever it might be, but uh, definitely, a, it's definitely a full family uh, event. Um, um, it kind of, you know, beef cattle, uh, cattle production is uh, very labor intensive mm-hmm. and this kind of gives a, um kind of a a way to share in the community with that you know people are coming together and they can share their experiences and learn from each other about Mm -hmm. what they're doing how they're uh what they're doing back at home to make things easier so uh, it's 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 very community oriented and it's a lot of fun Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah. everyone is very neighborly and yeah Yeah. supportive like you say and it is really cool and yeah. many people who are involved in cattle shows, like they'll go to many cattle shows. So that kind of becomes a circuit. And so mm-hmm. I'm imagining that you would get to know each other pretty well through that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's fun seeing them at all at the different shows. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And getting to watch uh, your genetics, but also their genetics progress mm-hmm. throughout the year mm-hmm. uh, is just kind of, it's kind of cool. I enjoy it. Yeah. And you are in competition with each other, but it's still fun. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's, yeah, you're all in the same industry and and wanting the same things. Yeah. Yeah. But yes, in the ring, it's, uh, you're going for the, (laughs) you're going for the banner. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. Um, going back to in the ring, are the judges also looking at the people leading the animals? Um, yep. I would say so. Um, I mean, so there's two types of if we, we can get into 4-H and that's a, that's a whole different aspect because there Mm -hmm. is, uh, confirmation and showmanship. Um, confirmation is uh, within 4-H is when the judge looks at the animal and then showmanship yeah. is when they judge judges the individual showing the animal to see how best they do. Mm-hmm. Um, so there is there is an aspect where the judges will judge the, the showman. Mm-hmm. Um, so but, what are they looking for? Um, the confidence on the halter, like you said, or like we talked about earlier, um, you have to create that bond with that animal and they have to kind of trust you. So, you know, the, you can see pretty quick who has been working with their animals, um, created that, that bond and, um, the animal is just calm, cool, collected, um, in the show ring. Um, so they'll, they'll know how to best move their animal. Uh, if there's a certain way, they they usually know the faults of the animal and can and can uh, help to you know not show off those mm-hmm. those faults as much, and mm-hmm. then also uh, ex- um, make the the better parts of the animal more visible, and they can kind of work to make the animal the best it it can be. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, so judging there is an aspect where you do judge the the showman. Or show women. Yeah. I did not grow up with cattle showing and seeing my first cattle show, I was surprised at how much shampoo and blow drying (laughs) happens of the animal. So what are the day of or day before preparations? I know people get up very early to prepare their animals for that day. What all goes into that? Yeah. Um, yeah, it does start pretty early and the bigger your show string, the the earlier it gets. Um, so when you get to the, when you get to the fair, um, you'll wash all your animals. So yes, you use a ton of shampoo, conditioner, all that, just like we would. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we'll blow the animals, blow dry the animals, get them nice and dry. Mm -hmm. Um, We'll then uh, do any clipping, uh, which is just giving them a haircut, um, cleaning them up, making sure they look pretty, making sure things are smooth, mm-hmm. um, c- 
closer to showtime, we will um, maybe use some products like hairspray. Uh, we It's just kind of glue in a can mm -hmm. uh, to make the hair stand and pop. We might put in some uh, shine to make make their hair glow a little more uh, just kind of make them look pretty like um, someone putting makeup on or you know they, we're just making these cows look pretty um, mm -hmm. um, but yeah there is a lot of a lot of shampoo that goes into it <laughs> they get yeah. pretty dirty so it's a lot of yeah. work and it's almost an art how people prepare the cows and the cows do look very amazing after it is absolutely an yeah. art form yeah, yeah that's a great way to put it yeah 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 um like you said you didn't grow up on a farm but you were still able to get into cattle showing so is it still like that today like if someone was interested in showing animals where would they start is that something that you go through 4-H for h for? how does that work um yeah, there, there's a bunch of different ways to get in into showing cattle. Um, like uh, in my instance, it was through 4-H, um, but also mentorship. Um, I, the, my neighbors mentored me uh, yeah. on how to show cattle uh, and how to how to raise raise beef cattle. So uh -huh. uh, mentorship, finding finding a, a mentor to learn from. Um, kind of going back to the whole community aspect uh producers are are very open to to helping and mm -hmm. sharing their knowledge um to someone who wants to learn mm -hmm. so um uh, you can also reach out to uh local agriculture societies um they they can put you in touch with someone um government uh local other other organizations within a town mm -hmm. um they can, all these people will likely know someone that can, that can help you get into a show ring. So mm -hmm. um, it took many years before we bought our first, first cow. Um, so we were, we would borrow, borrow animals and show mm -hmm. for them and it and worked really well. And that's how, that's how I got to learn. Mm -hmm. Right. You don't necessarily have to own an animal to be showing. And live on a farm. Yeah. Own an animal or live on a farm. There is there is ways to uh, to be a part of the community. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. I know there is a few producers at Canadian Bull Congress who take um, some youth under their wings and have them showing some of their cattle and um, are working with them throughout the year. And it is really cool to see. And it is a really cool way if that's something you're interested in, but you don't own a farm or don't have land it is a really cool way to get into it and it can be a really cool experience yeah it's 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 very re rewarding the mm -hmm. whole uh it's a lot of work don't get me wrong yeah uh there's a lot of work that goes into it but at the end of the day it's very rewarding to mm -hmm. uh take an animal into a show ring whether you get first or last just to know that you put in the put in all this time and effort to to make this animal look the best yeah yeah that's really cool yeah um what is your favorite part about the cattle industry that's that's tough. Um, there's a lot of different things. It's provided a lot of opportunities for me. Mm -hmm. um, uh, like it, I this is how I learned what I wanted to do uh, uh, growing up. Uh, I've got to travel uh, because of cattle shows. I've got to go to Australia, the states, wow. uh, all across Canada. Uh, so it does provide a lot, a lot of opportunities to do mm -hmm. some fun um, things and meet some even better people. Mm -hmm. um so uh i like um i like that's a big aspect but mm -hmm. i mean more importantly uh like at the end of the day we're we're feeding we're feeding we're taking a part of the role in feeding the world right mm -hmm. so um and the level of care and attention to detail that these producers put in uh through breedings through just general daily care mm -hmm. uh i think uh if people knew how much work and time and effort and mm -hmm. uh, that these producers put in, uh, I mm -hmm. think they'd be very impressed. Yeah. yeah. Cattle producers are passionate about what they do and they really care for their animals. Absolutely. And, yeah. Yeah. It's a really cool thing to watch and just know that um, 
the cattle are in good hands and that the future of the cattle industry is in good hands. And you really see that at a show like Canadian Bull Congress. Um, mm-hmm. It's just a really nice to know that the future of cattle is in good hands. Absolutely. Absolutely. What is something that you wish people knew about the cattle industry? Um, uh, I think it kind of, I don't want to re say anything, uh, but it's kind of the, the attention to detail and the amount of mm-hmm. effort that goes into it. Um, I think if people knew more about what, how their uh, how the animals are are raised and cared for mm-hmm. um, within the cattle industry. I think they mm-hmm. would, uh, you know, I think there would there wouldn't be some of these stigmas and mm-hmm. and uh, around it. So mm-hmm. um, also that producers are are making more efficient animals, uh, mm-hmm. and so that kind of helps with um, you know environmental um, things. Uh, so like there's a lot that they do that mm. that uh, improves the environment and carbon sequestration and so on. So there's a lot of good uh, from the cattle industry. And I, I'll talk about that as, as much as I can. Yeah. Yeah. That's really interesting. Yeah. Um, I just had a question, but I forgot what I was going to ask you. Um, I do want to say that for anybody who's listening to this and they're interested in cattle shows and this seems interesting to them, you are more than welcome to attend a cattle show. Anyone is welcome to um, come and view it and see what it's about. And producers like questions. Um, they like when you yeah. ask them about how they raise their animals and what they what they have going on. And you can ask them about their genetics if you know anything about that. And I think like the care that you've talked about um they they really do care about it and they want you to know and there's a lot of misinformation out there and um it's good to know the information from somebody who is raising the animals and in the day-to-day and they can answer any questions or concerns that you might have and i think that's really important to remember is that that they do care and they're there for you to ask questions Absolutely. And they'll often, uh, like they'll be happy to, usually I don't want to speak for everyone, but they'll be happy to have you out on farm and show mm-hmm. you firsthand of what, mm-hmm. uh, what happens and what's mm-hmm. going on on a day to day, which mm-hmm. is, uh, can be a cool thing to see. Yeah, absolutely. Is there anything that you wanted to add or anything that we missed about cattle shows? I don't think so. Uh, it's, um, I'll, again, I'll, I'll just reiterate that it's a, it's a fun atmosphere. It's a great community mm-hmm. and it's a, it's pretty rewarding and you get to have a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Well, thank you for joining me on the podcast. It was really great to talk to you and catch up with you and, and learn more about cattle shows. Absolutely. Happy to uh, always love to chat and talk about cows. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you for listening to this episode. If you like what you hear and want to learn more about rural opportunities, please follow Camrose Regional Exhibition on Facebook or Instagram, subscribe to our YouTube channel, or follow wherever you listen to podcasts. Thank you for supporting the Camrose Regional Exhibition and Agriculture Society. We appreciate it.